Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hand of Fate, a game made by indie studio Defiant Development. It's a game I admit I had not heard of before today. Apparently it has been in early access and has just left early access. I just just heard about it today and it was like, what is, what is this game Hand of Fate? So I took a look at its store page and it intrigued me. Especially since I've recently got into Darkest Dungeon and its brand of insanity, and it being a rogue light or, well, rogue, it's kind of hard to say on that one because it's a turn based RPG based on randomness. This, Hand of Fate, is something of a tabletop card game brought to life. So it looks quite interesting. You're going to be collecting this deck to improve yourself and to move on forward, but the dungeon itself is done by a deck of cards as well. It, quite interesting. Haven't played it yet other than to make sure everything works and to change the settings because the graphical settings weren't quite set up at the very beginning either. So I know very little of it other than I liked what I saw in the preview, so I'm going to give it a shot, see how it is, record my impressions, of course, as I go along for you lot. So first things first, the thing that kind of disappoints me is that I can't go into a menu here. And you can see that it's using controller prompts. I, I heard a controller was recommended for this, so I plugged it in, got it all set up, and as you can see, it starts off with that. Now I can hit enter to progress, or I can hit the supposed A button. But I can't go into any kind of menu. It starts you off just right here, just like this. Ah, one more for the game. Come. Sid. You have passed the Thirteen Gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here. Yet, I say, turn back. Now this is pretty cool, I kind of like this. So this is kind of your intro screen, you, you hit A or you hit enter to get in here. Now I will kind of show off the options and everything here. So you can go into controls, you can see you can use keyboard and mouse and all the options are here. And you can turn the gamepad on and off, so I can hit select and go back. And you'll see I just have uh, a start button here. So you can go back and forth. It's unfortunate that it doesn't automatically notice when I want to do that. All right, so go ahead and we'll take a look at the options here real fast. So unfortunately, the options other than the control, I mean, the controls are nice. You can rebind everything. That's great. Uh, you can, of course, turn the gamepad on. And it has a vibration feature, which is kind of cool. There doesn't appear to be a way to change the controls on the controller, though. That's a downside. Normally, default controls are fine on these things, but I still don't understand why a lot of games do that, where they let you change the keyboard, but they don't let you change the actual pad. Beyond that, settings are pretty basic. I've got the audio set up here. I've turned on the subtitles. Uh, graphics option, unfortunately, there's no drop down. You have to kind of cycle between these. Quality is odd. It's okay, so you got fast, fastest, and so on. Beautiful and fantastic. I'm turning on maximum. This is a game based on the Unity engine, so it's not going to really push too many limits from what I can tell. Nothing on Unity that I've seen is really too big, but it doesn't look bad. There, you, know, you saw the obvious glitch there in the very beginning where his mask was kind of melding into his face as the, the scene moved, which was kind of unfortunate. Different language options are here. You can reset your progress at any time, and other than that, there's credits. So, as you can see, not a lot here in the options, but at least I can change the controls. Now, the downside, of course, is when I have the controller on, controller on you can't see my mouse cursor. So, I can't, I'm moving the mouse a bit, but you can't actually see it. So, I'm not going to be able to point everything out with the mouse cursor unless I switch it. But, hopefully, that won't be too big of a deal. So, let's go ahead and start our journey with our Master of Cards here. The game begins. One lives and one dies. Let us see what you are made of. Here is the first member of my court, the Jack of Dust. 
Twelve in all must fall before you may challenge me. So it leads me to believe that I've got 12 challenges in my scenario, 12 enemies that I'll have to kill, 12 bosses, whatever, uh, before I get to the final challenge. So this is the bandit leader. He's stronger and faster than most bandits encountered, become uh, enraged, making powerful, unblockable attacks. He also inspires his followers to steal gold on each hit. So of course, without getting into the game, we don't exactly know exactly how these mechanics will work for us. In the ruins of an ancient temple, among the eternally shifting sand dunes, lives a mysterious leader of the desert bandits, infamous for his reign of terror over any spice caravans that dare take their chances traveling through his domain. He rules as a king over the barren lands. So part of this, I say it's a, a card game, like tabletop card game, that uh, that's how it treats its random mechanic. Like, it's totally like almost like Darkest Dungeon, almost like any other rogue light or like in that it's going to just randomly give you your adventure. Scared of returning to the fray. Yes. But in this case it's also like a, uh, I guess maybe choose your own adventure You'll, we'll see hopefully here. I've, I've, I've seen one card that suggested it. Music's good for, uh, music is pretty good here too. But I'm going to have options that will help dictate my path. The cards fall where they may. We begin. All right, so what I can see is in the lower right-hand corner, apparently my deck and discard. In the center here is my dungeon, and I can move the card that I highlight on. That's me there at the start with, uh, it looks like it says stairs and my little icon, and I can select where to go. And I only have one adjacent card, so that's as far as I can go. On the lower left, I see that I have health of 100, I have food of 10, no gold, and it looks like I have a couple items behind that, what looks like an ax. What I do know so far from just kind of fiddling with it is that every move I make consumes food. If I run out of food, every move I make takes 10 health. So I have to make sure that stays high. How, I don't know yet. You can always review your cards here. So this is me, this is my character. Uh, looks like I've got several items that I can equip. I've got gloves, trinkets, artifacts, shields, helmets, and blessings and curses. Interesting, so the helm is not directly over the head. That's a little odd, but that's okay. I start off with what appears to be a rusty axe, 20 damage, X button to attack, or left mouse button, I'm, I believe is the button for that. Okay, there we go. Light armor. Uh, during combat, light armor gives some protection with no penalty to speed, so that might be a thing. And that's all I've got. So these are the two cards that we can see behind in the uh, lower left-hand corner when I leave here. So if I go back, you can see there is the axe, and the one behind that is more than likely the armor. So that's all I've really got right now. Let's go ahead and delve into it, shall we? I was never a fan of illusion or pretense. Here, I'll make an exception. Whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local tavern, a strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention, and you notice that he appears to be a goblin poorly disguised as a human. His wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. He cackles uncontrollably for a few moments, then sits patiently, waiting for your answer. So here we go, we have a, a choose what we want. I can choose to ignore him. I can ask him what he needs, or I can give him the bread from my plate. So here I would be making an assumption about what he wants. Probably best to ask him. Now there is this option here to give him 20 gold, but I don't have that, so obviously I can't do it. So let's play it safe. We're gonna ask him what he needs. Need? I need to help you. Mr. Lionel taps his staff on the ground and a shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. He smiles a warm grin that reveals all his chipped and yellow teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? Shield card. I cannot expect you to get by without some protection. All right, shield provides uh, passive damage mitigation in the Y button or the right mouse, I believe. Uh, can repl uh, reflect projectiles. So reflect. Shields with this trait allows the hero to reflect projectiles back at the attacker. It must be performed with precise timing as the projectile draws near. So, alright, hits Y. 
counter. Weapons with this trait allow the uh, hero to counter their foe's attacks. So what I've seen is, and if I go in, I can't go into it right now. If I go into the options, it looks like it controls a little bit like, say, a Batman Arkham system. You've got the attack button on X, you've got counter on Y, stun on B, and uh, dodge roll on A. So it looks a lot like that, which another thing that intrigues me about it, we'll see how this is. You can now reflect your opponent's ranged attacks using your shield. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. Alright, well I plan to, so let's go ahead and hit the button. And now I can move on to the next card. So this is very linear. I do know that you can sometimes have options to go to where you choose the room you want to go to. Let's go ahead and look at the inventory so we can see it. There it is. There's my shield. Reflect counter. Pretty nice. Let's go to the next card. That first moment. That glinting weapon. The call to action. To adventure. Truly, there is nothing like it. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. The walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, perfect for climbing. So I have the option here to climb down or leave it, so... It's a weapon. It says there's vines that we can climb down. Let's do it. Let's go get this weapon. Oh dear. Okay. I have a 1 in 4 Choose chance to fail. Options. Now, it looked like they just reversed themselves, which means the failure was on the right, should be on the left, but I don't know if that's true or not. It could be that it shuffled it and the animation just looked like they swapped. So let's just hit one in the middle because that seems to be the safe option. It looked like it did exactly what I was expecting, but it's kind of cool to see that my success and failure depends upon me. It could be random. We'll have to see. We'll know more as we go further. All right, you very carefully, you make your way to the bottom of the canyon. Draw one weapon card. Okay. Cool, so random selection through drawing of cards. 23 damage sword. Excellent. All right, do I like to equip the sword? Now, it shows me that on the left, my current weapon is the rusty axe, which is a damage of 20. So I'm gaining three, so we'll go ahead and say yes. A moment to savor. That will make you much more effective. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move forward. As you can see, I'm down to eight food. I started at ten, so if I hit it, it should go down to seven. Yep. The maid? Fair Merith. I'm not surprised to find that this encounter remains vivid in your memories. One day, in a shady forest, you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. I am Merith, of the forest folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What boon would you ask of me? I can ask for longer life, supplies, or gold. Um... Supply... Uh, interesting choice. It seems greedy, but I have no gold for my adventure, so having some gold would be nice. So it would be some supplies. That would be kind of greedy. If I'm assuming on game mechanics, supplies I should be good on, right? If we go for food. I only have one more card to go. What would longer life be? Would that be like healing? That's the question. Do I look in this in forms of game... Do I look at this in terms of game mechanics, or do I kind of look at it as a true uh, like role-playing game sitting here at the tabletop? We're going to go for it. I'm going to, I'm going to ask for gold. Let's see what happens. Mara seems surprised. It is unlike an adventurer to beg for coin, but very well, if that is your wish. The dealer draws you three gold gain cards. Fifteen. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Thirty. Okay, so it's random, the ones we get. So I get three cards with random values. Okay, so I've gotten 70 gold from that. The greatest of magical artifacts were forged long ago and have only limited uses before their power is spent. Use them wisely, and they may guide you to victory. Farewell, mortal. Well, let's move on. Every step you take consumes food, but you will also heal as you proceed. 
You've discovered an exit to this area. All right. You embark upon the next leg of your adventure. Your journey is well begun. This is what I was looking for. You show some aptitude for the game. Perhaps this will not be as boring as I thought. All right, so I've made it past the first leg, and so it looks like I still I'm going to be continuing my current amount of food and health. So maybe I should have asked for supplies. That might have been a better option. Well, let's see. We've got four more to go. Dead man's. I'm sure gorge. it's not called Dead Man's Gorge without reason. Really? Maybe it's just a pleasant name. Someone, you know, maybe it's an ironic name, right? That, that could be it. While crossing the ancient rope bridges of Dead Man's Gorge, you hear sounds of movement from below. It's an ambush! Draw one monster card. Oh, that is cool. That is very cool. So you, you see can the now counter your opponent's attacks. Hit the counter button when you see the flashing indicator. Excellent. All right, counter stun. I probably don't. I don't know if I have counter or uh, don't have stun or dodge roll yet. I don't know yet. But that's kind of cool the way the cards kind of show up on your character and then he equips that item. Okay, so there it is. Yeah. Okay, so it's a lot like the Batman games. Well, very nice. Very nice. Not too difficult, but those were just the first enemies. You recover what you can from the dead. The dealer draws you three gain cards. Okay, so there's gold gain and then regular gain, which regular gain might include gold. Armory, so I get one equipment card. Explorer's it's helmet. Late to navigation, but still. Reveals stair encounters upon entering a level and grants a gold bonus for revealing every encounter on a level. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it, it's a boon to exploration, which I like to do anyway. So I'll always know where the stairs are, and I'll always and I'll gain gold bonus if I complete everything. Well, this level is pretty linear, so that's really helpful anyway. Three food, awesome. And another three food. Excellent. So good. I'm doing good on this one. So let's go to the inventory. And let's just look. Oh, cool. You can see the helmet on me. And there it is. So it doesn't offer any kind of bonuses other than that. But that's that's good enough. So if we go back here. It says it revealed stairs. Let me take a look at this real quick. Reveal stairs encounter upon entering. Okay, upon entering. So I'd have to re-enter this level. Oh dear. What did you think would happen with a card called Ambush, eh? Maybe I got ambushed with posies and candy. A slight rustling behind you is all the warning you get that your life is in grave danger. Draw one monster card. Ah, good, another two of dust. That was pretty simple last time. I'll try a few different things. We'll try the dodge roll. I actually didn't hit the dodge roll button when uh, you saw me do a little bit of dodging earlier. That was the counter that I did. Cool, this area looks a little bit different. It looks pretty nice. The graphics are not too bad on this one. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look. There's the dodge. What about stun? There's the stun. Okay, apparently the number at the bottom is my combo counter. I'm noticing in the lower left, a uh, bigger number will appear as I counter or as I use attacks. That's pretty cool. Oh, I got something there, didn't I? While searching the area for anything worth salvaging, you realize that one of your opponents is only pretending to be dead. Sneak up and kill them or flee. You know... They ambushed me. They knew the risks. I have no reason to flee. Uh, 
Oh, Trixie. Okay, yo. Oh! Taken by surprise, you are knocked to the ground. When you recover, you find yourself alone with the dead. Okay. Wow. I'm not expecting that. So, I wonder if that was random. I, I might have to take a look and see if I can pick out where that card... Of course, they, all the cards kind of shuffled in together, so you never really know where it might have been. 25% chance to fail, and I still failed. I'm miserable at this. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Mages sell only specific items that they've discarded in faraway lands. Their prices can be high, but they also pay well for anything that catches their interests. I'm thinking of looking at the shop. I can't look at my inventory just right now, but... I could approach it. I could pass it by. I've got 70 gold. Let's, let's take a look at what they've got. Greetings, wise traveler! I have much to offer you! If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. Okay, so I can buy, sell... Buy items, sell items, or buy food. Let's see what I've got. Uh, I've got my sword, my shield, and my helmet. Ten, four, and five, so... That's okay. I really do kind of like this card aesthetic thing. It's pretty neat. How much is food? Six coins. I, I it's interesting that it shows a value of dollars, even though they're technically gold. But So it takes six for one. Uh, I'm pretty good on food. Let's see what he's got to buy. Oh wow, some of them are flipped over. I wonder what uh, if there's a penalty for mousing over it. Maybe it's just random and I won't know for now. Okay, so plunderer's cap, value 44. When you draw supplies, instead draw two and pick one. Oh, okay. So it gives me a choice to look at supply cards and pick one of the two that I want. That's kind of cool. As of right now, I'm kind of I think I like the idea of getting a bit more gold. Let's move on. We have the hags wraps. I've already got a helm, too, so that's why we're going to move on. Each strike inflicts a curse, slowing and weakening your opponent. Not bad? Mm, maybe not yet. Let's see what else we've got. Heron's Antlers. Lizard men take double damage from the player's attacks. Okay, nope. What's this? Damocles. During combat, press the right bumper to throw knives in eight directions. Interesting. And it shows a number. Um, I wonder if this is a limited time use thing. I have enough gold, thanks to the original, the first, in, like, what, third encounter. Hmm. Well, let's try it. It looks like a limited use item. I want to learn this mechanic. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. A classical approach to dealing with crowds. Artifacts provide powerful special abilities to use in combat, but it takes time to ready them. Okay. All right, we're done here. Ah. You have reached my first champion. A good man, driven to madness by a war that took all from him. Wife and child, kith and kin. From such dark and brittle iron, I forge my tools. Now we see your metal. Okay, so we know that he can become enraged and he can do attacks that are unblockable. So from the other two pieces of combat I've gotten, and now I know it's a little bit like Arkham, I'm pretty sure I can understand it. So I just have to watch out. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Oh, okay. So that's what that icon under his name is. Ooh, four of dust. All right, so there should be four enemies plus him, I would imagine. Oh, that's pretty cool. Some enemy attacks cannot be blocked or countered. Get out of the way or stop them with your own counterattack. 
Excellent. All right, I'm going to try my Damocles, since I've got a group of four over there. My artifact is the right bumper, so I'm going to go ahead and... Nice. And it looks like I was right. It is limited use. Because it's now got an eight under it. Uh-oh. Got out of the way. Yeah, just like Arkham, I, it, you dive in if you're at a distance. I did not realize you were such a fearsome adversary. I will bear that in mind. Down into the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. One champion has been sent to the cabinet. Yet, we are only at the start of our road. You will face 11 more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle. None reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You may claim your rewards, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, so do I. Balance must be retained. See, that sounds intriguing to me, and I wonder exactly how this will go. As a reward for defeating the bandit Jack, you receive these new cards. Oh, it reminds me of Hearthstone a little bit, so I've got a bunch of new cards that I can now reveal. Jack of Skulls. Dead King's Hall. Local Peasant. Devil's Choice. River. Captain of the Guards. Now those have locks. Captain of the Guard and the Jack of Skulls have locks over their heads. And they also have uh, those icons of which he just gave me new cards. So what it looks like is I have the chance to make my own deck that will fuel my own adventure. So I can put in the deck the types of adventures I want to play. And there's going to be a little bit of risk and reward there. So we see like Jack of Skulls and the Captain of the Guards. Looks like those will reward me with the possibility of new cards. The others have a different kind of icon that I don't really know anything about yet. Oh, more. Medium armor, excellent. Chains of Rage. Mercenary Contract. Medium armor. Fortune's Breath. Desperate Measures. Okay, for defeating my bandit Jack, I will give you new challenges. Bandit attack. Maze of traps. Goblins. Shall we deal again? Well, I gotta say, that is pretty cool. So that was the first adventure in this game, and I look forward to trying out some more, and I'll go ahead and take you guys along for the ride for a bit, and if you guys are interested, we can keep going. Uh, I rather kind of like these, and these random styles are pretty nice. Uh, I, I think they can be pretty interesting. There's so many opportunities, so many options, uh, so many things that could possibly happen, which I think make them far more entertaining. So we could possibly continue on with this and Darkest Dungeon together. Obviously, it will depend on what you guys think, what you guys might want to see. So thank you for coming along with me for the first mission of Hand of Fate. See you next time.